there you have it. Emmy Buendia is the winner of the Barry Butler Memorial Trophy, voted the Norwich City Player of the Season by you guys, by the fans. And I think most people are in agreement that it is the right man to have won it. Connor, you uh, you committed to that nice and early, didn't you? You went with a with a column and said that he was the man that that should be winning it. Um, I, I I'm in total agreement as as I tweeted, but um, I think it's it's good to see that the right outcome has been arrived at. Yeah, I think I think it, it's difficult because these players, um, Wendy, I uh, think about Wes Houlihan and, and and how he made people feel when he played. James Madison, I suppose you could throw in there as well. And I think people have such an emotive connection to these kind of attacking, creative players because they're so exciting to watch. They make you feel something. And often they're the players, I think, that maybe stand out in your mind a little bit more. Um, yeah, I think it, it would have been pretty pretty tragic if, if Norwich fans wouldn't have, have maybe celebrated the talent and uh, and what a remarkable season it's been for him in terms of output but it's just been a joy to watch hasn't it I think that's that's maybe helped everyone through what's been a tough year in terms of obviously fans not being able to be there so yeah as you say the right decision um, uh, key for me I think when you look at that top three is perhaps the amount of players who could be in there that aren't in there that probably showcases sort of how many options Norwich fans had but yeah, I think when you boil it down to a three, there's maybe one I think that, that you could probably argue deserves to be in there. But beyond that, I think it's probably a fair enough top three, to be honest. Um, we'll be with you for about 10, 15 minutes. So get your questions and comments in. Just a quick hit, really, to review the player of the season results and also uh, preview tonight's EFL awards. We'll have live updates of that for you at pinkin.com. Uh, plenty of Norwich interest, as you'd imagine, with them do dominating the championship this season. Wendy and Puki are up for player of the season. Max Aaron's up for young player of the season. Uh, the championship team of the season will be named and we'll have to see whether Daniel Farker finally gets a, a managerial award out of the EFL. It'll be uh, pretty interesting. But we've got a bit of a key quote um, in terms of Wendy what he's told the club, which has got people talking a bit, hasn't it? Uh, I will always be a canary for life. I don't know what will happen in the future, but I will always support this amazing club and I enjoy every minute playing for this shirt. So this does, whatever happens, we all know if, you know, just totally theoretical, Barcelona come in with £40 million, then Emmy's probably off. He's That's a difficult one to stand in the way of. But I think Norwich fans are all hoping that if it's Aston Villa decide to stump up £40 million, as it is one of the stories which has appeared in recent days, one of the many stories, that maybe that won't be the case because um, that's not that much of a step up. But that's probably for another day. But what this does, as we've seen with a long list of names, is it gives him a real emotional tie uh, or, or strengthens those emotional ties to the area for him, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And I remember speaking to him back in November and that was obviously what not long after he'd been left out of the, the side against Bournemouth and we'd had all the speculation. He kind of reiterated what he said there in, in the club interview about really enjoying playing for the club. Obviously, he's, he's had a, another kid this season, hasn't he? So that, I, I guess, probably helps him grow an affiliation with the area because regardless of what happens now one of his one of his kids will have been born here so um yeah I, I understand it and also from a player's perspective why why wouldn't you love playing in in a team the the way they're playing and the freedom that he's given as well I don't think there's a a lot of clubs at any level that that maybe grant players particularly from an attacking sense the license to essentially do what what they wish I mean there's obviously a bit of a structure to that but um he's got a hell of a lot of freedom in there and um, he's loved, I think, by everyone. Loved by Daniel Farker, loved by the supporters, um, loved certainly by um, the board and and everyone who watches Norwich every week. So I think when you have that feeling that that you're kind of loved and 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 you're made to feel special, I think any player will will grow an affiliation. But um, he, he's one of those, isn't he? And, and and you're right, you touched upon it there. If he if he does take that next step in his career and he does go and play for a top team in Europe or a team certainly at, at European level in a, in a European competition then I think most Norwich fans would look at it and and wish him well and it, maybe to a similar degree that they have with James Madison and maybe the pride they felt at having played a part in his journey I think that's going to be the case with Emi Buendia but right here right now I think it's about savouring his talent and savouring that he's wearing yellow and green because uh, he's some player. He certainly is <laughs> 14 goals 16 assists uh, there's so many highlights to pick out from him and for me, the still, I think the Barnsley goal, the volley when McLean sailed that pass over his shoulder and just the run into the box as well. You, you watch the Barnsley defenders just thinking, where's he going? And then he smacks a volley in the bottom corner. That was a sublime goal, but he's had some some lovely moments as well. Um, 
Aaron Michael, let's bring his comment up there. Correct top three, although could have easily swapped Pookie for Skip. We've had nine high performers this season. So he's actually putting a number on it there. But I, I agree. I think actually, for me, I, I would have had Pookie third uh, ahead of Skip. I think Skip's been really good. Uh, maybe there's a little element of Norwich fans wanting to uh, create one of those bonds that we're talking about with a player, you know, try and tease him back to Norwich if that opportunity does arise this summer. Um, but for, for Pookie to score 25 goals and not be in the top three feels a bit harsh because, you know, it's been two big spurts really from him, hasn't it, where um, in, in either half of the season. If you take those goals and, and, and the worst and clinical finishes is in there out of Norwich season, then it could have been a very, very different story. Yes, he has missed quite a few. He has openly admitted that, hasn't he, that he should have probably had another nine or ten goals with the chances that he's had created for him. But that's not how football tends to go. So do you think there's almost a little bit of a contrarian attitude here as in, well, team has already won it. He doesn't need to win it again. <laughs> Maybe. I think there's, there's also an element that because, um, and, and you'll know the stat better than me, was it his last eight seasons he's got double figures I think maybe it's it's got to that stage now where people just expect him to score goals so people see Timu Puki and see 25 goals and it maybe doesn't feel as special as maybe if let's say Jordan Hugill did it for example because that's kind of I think what people expect of him now and in, in many ways you could potentially argue that maybe he's a victim of his own success in terms of people yeah. look at 25 goals and go well actually that's four less than he got last time so he probably doesn't really deserve to be in the top three but it's a, it's an astounding record I mean to have a striker that scores 25 goals in any season is is remarkable but yeah like you say the fact he's not in the top three is um is is really quite something and probably illustrates perhaps how good Norwich City have been this year and yeah like you say he could have had um, more, but then every striker could have more. Even Ivan Tony could have had more than the 29 he's got. Um, I think it's strikers miss chances. It's just what happens in football, isn't it? But to produce two seasons like he has in the in the championship and to score what f 50? Well, my maths is terrible off the top of the top of the top of my head, but quite a, a, a large number of goals across two seasons to join a fairly elite club of being able to do that in back to back championship campaigns. It does feel, yeah, a little bit strange that he's not in the top three. But saying that, knowing his character and knowing perhaps how difficult he is to kind of get praise out of for in, in terms of his own performance, he's, he's usually one to focus on the team. I'm not sure he'll be he'll be too concerned, to be honest. I think he'll be relishing the opportunity to go again in the Premier League and to see if he can record another 10 goals and, and to keep this remarkable run going. But yeah, I just wonder if people, not taking him for granted, because I think that's that's maybe the wrong expression but certainly maybe it, it feels a bit less special now because he's kind of already done it if that makes sense and that's how people are viewing it I don't know if that's right but it's just a theory I remember speaking to Cameron Jerome at Wembley in 2015 after the playoff final and him <laughs> saying his piece about not winning the player of the season because he scored what 21 goals that season I think off the top of my head uh, Bradley Johnson won it, didn't he, for having such a, a great season? But he sort of said it jokingly, but you could tell there was a little bit of um, uh, sincerity behind it, really. And he said that he'd had a chat with Alan Balker, who was the chairman at the time, and said, what have I got to do to win player of the season? Um, so, yeah, you, you always want these things. But Pookie does have the... Um, he does have the feather in his cap of being nominated for Championship Player of the Season again, which is tonight, uh, alongside Buendia and Ivan Tony. Uh, so we'll have to see how how that goes. But um, I suppose that the thing with with Pookie, as you say, over 50 goals, um, he did make double figures in the Premier League last year. As he said uh, when I spoke to him after the Bournemouth game, uh, what, a couple of weeks ago now, it's about proving himself in the Premier League now. He goes to the Euros with with Finland, with uh, hopefully in good shape, as long as nothing uh, goes wrong between here and then. And his profile really will probably be as high as it has ever been this summer. So the way things are shaping up, he's going to be in, in good condition to have another good season in the Premier League with Norwich. But I think, from my point of view, that Norwich need at least another sort of pooky standard player to be competing with him next year, which I guess is probably what they hope Dermot could be. Yeah, I think so. Particularly given, as you as you mentioned there, the Euros and um, not not to maybe 
put a dampener on things particularly, but you can't envisage them getting particularly far if they do progress the group just because of the overall quality of their of their squad. But then equally, look at what, what Wales did a, a few seasons ago. It's not beyond the realms of, of possibility. So if he has a deep run into the Euros, then you, you're definitely going to want, want to ensure that you have cover there because it, it's a fairly prolonged spell of football then isn't it for him and, and let's let's be clear if he if he's fit he's going to start every game at the Euros he's he's as Daniel Farkas said before an absolute superstar over there and obviously he'll have the the bit between his teeth not just because of obviously the carrot of trying to get his country as as far as they can in their first major tournament but also because there's there's that that record in the distance as well of becoming his country's top goal scorer so yeah. there's plenty for, for him to play for like you said now for the remaining two games for him will be about one, securing the title, but from there to make sure that he doesn't get a, an injury that will rule him out of that because I think we, we already saw it last year to an extent and whether it was a, a contributing factor or not, I guess only he knows. But it, when when the Euros were off the table, I think we suddenly saw his form um, sort of decline a little bit. So, yeah, it's 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 going to be interesting because I think there, there will potentially come a point in the Premier League where there's a natural burnout from him because of the sheer amount of football that he's played. So you would like them to have another one in there, in their, in their arsenal, so to speak, to to replace him. Someone like you said there, who's who's maybe be a bit more on it on it on his level, and, and someone who's a bit similar to what he does. Because if Norwich take him out and put Jordan Hugel in, then they essentially have to restructure how they how they attack completely. They have to bring on a a winger, and and, and again maybe Xavi Quintia is perhaps a bit more suited because of the way he he, he crosses early. So. It, it kind of changes how they want to play. So, yeah, I would agree. I think that they, they do need a striker and they do need one who's probably a bit more on, on his level for next season. Uh, Kevin Andrews missed the top three. So Oliver Skip was in third, Grant Hanley second, and Emmy Buendia in first, as most of us were expecting. Toby Mills asks, who do you think will leave in the summer, in your opinion? Um, Toby, won't go too deep into that at the moment, because I think we have discussed that quite a lot already, to be honest. Um, I said a bit about Buendia earlier, but I'd say at this stage, I'm I'm probably expecting Max Aarons to be the one who's most likely to leave. And then, as I said earlier, uh, Todd or, or, or Emmy only going for big money. And if it's a big step up, as Daniel Farker talked about uh, last Friday, but we, we'll, we'll come back to that a lot, I'm sure, in, in, in the weeks uh, and months ahead. No problem, Kevin, at all. So just finally uh, to close, because Connor has got uh, the next episode of our uh, Terrace Talk series to record in, in, very shortly. So we're going to wrap in just a minute. Uh, but Grant Hanley, we should just mention him as well. He was runner up in 2018 behind James Madison, wasn't he? So he's uh, he's managed that again. He passed 100 appearances for Norwich not too long ago. And he has uh, he has really impressed, hasn't he? He's been a real um, sort of defensive force. And along with players like Skip and particularly that uh, the, the the balance of uh, the partnership with Gibson for for a lot of the season. He's um he's really teed himself up for a good crack at the Premier League again as well, isn't he? Yeah, I was speaking to someone last week, I think it was, and, and we were speaking about Grant Hanley, and he kind of said, if if you look at the last, well, probably this season really, and 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 you think, has there been a striker that's got the better of him? Not really, and, and that that is kind of a testament, I think, to to how well he's played at this level. And I wrote a column on it on Saturday, which um, he, he decided to give a penalty away, so it took the gloss off a little bit, but just about <laughs> yeah. how he'd um, he'd he proved me wrong in terms of uh, maybe the perception I had of him when he signed a bit of a, a head it kick it for centre back for 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 whatever reason, and I think he's shown himself in the time he's been at Norwich to be actually be a lot more than that, and. He certainly improved his game, but key to me this year has been the fact that he's been able to keep himself fit. I think he's kind of threatened to show this quality over a, a prolonged period of time and then a long-term injury comes along and it feels like he has to start again. This season he's played 40 games and um, it's been part of a, a Norwich back line that's seen some changes. He was well, playing alongside Ben Godfrey at the start and um, obviously then he left and um, we obviously had the Quintia stuff and then he dropped out and Jakob Sorensen had to come in and then Gibson came in. There's been a lot of change in that back line. He's kind of been the constant. He's now in a situation where he's having to almost mentor an 18-year-old through the, the remainder of the season. It's, he, he's been incredible, I think, in terms of what he's done this year and won't get the same level of, of praise as Timu Puki, certainly externally, or, or, or Emi Buendia. But in terms of contribution, I think it's, it's, it's been just as pivotal. Some of his blocks have been tremendous. He's put his head in where it hurts. He's shown real hunger, I think, to to get back to the Premier League. I mean, 29 now, this 
possibly could have been his last chance to get there if it would have gone wrong. So um, I, I think he enters the Premier League as Norwich's best centre-back overall, knows his limitations. and I think we all know his limitations and that's why that partnership with Ben Gibson works um, pretty well. But if he can keep himself fit, then I think you'd, you'd fancy Norwich to have a better defensive record with him in it than, than they did two seasons ago. So, um, yeah, a really positive campaign and, and thoroughly deserves his, his spot in the top three for me. Top stuff. We will call it there. Uh, loads more on player of the season. Connor's been a busy boy this afternoon at Pinkin.com, of course. Uh, tomorrow's papers. Um, I'm, I'm on the late shift for the EFL Awards tonight. That is live on Sky from half seven. Uh, but if you can't follow that along live, then we'll have the live updates running on our website. So you can follow along. Of course, we'll have the pre-match press conference tomorrow. Lunchtime as well. I had ahead of Saturday's game against Reading when victory, of course, will seal the championship title. Thanks very much for watching. We'll catch up with you soon.